take it about a place. It'll take creation, imagination. Hi, I'm Jeannie from Creations by Jeannie, and today I'm going to show you how I did the lotus blossom reflection in the water. Uh, we're going to go over a few sizes, I guess, first to kind of get that out of the way. Of course, your card base. I'm just using a standard uh, Whisper White cut at um, it's 11 inches by four and a quarter, folded to five and a half by four and a quarter. The piece that we're going to be stamping and sponging on is cut at three and three fourths by five inches. Then the top note die, uh, Biggs die, is cut at the five and a half by four and a quarter and line up your Biggs die when you run it through. This one's a little offset, but I was going to put a message up at the top. I just didn't do it for you. And then I just mounted that onto the uh, standard card base. I did sponge around the border of the, you can see the difference when I hold the two together. I will go over the inks real quick. You will need, and this, you may not want to use all these inks, that's up to you. I have Sky Soft, Pool Party, Coastal Cabana, Tempting Turquoise, and Indigo Island. I also have the Whisper White Craft, Old Olive, and Baked Brown Sugar. For the Lotus Blossom today, we're going to use Elegant Eggplant, Tangelo Twist, and Daffodil Delight. Now I'm going to move this out of the way. We're going to bring a little card piece in. Okay, the first step that I did was the sponging. And for most sponging projects, I would say it's always best to start with your lightest color and then work your way up. I will start by covering pretty much the whole card with, excuse me, I will start by covering the whole card pretty much with the sky or soft sky and for whichever end you decide you want to be your actual sky I would leave kind of some white or lighter shaded areas so that's pretty good there I'm not going to close the ink pads yet because we may need them. Next we'll bring in the pool party. <clears throat> Making sure that had some ink on there. We're just going to put a little bit of that across the top. Now we can go a little more at the across the bottom half. Okay, then we're going to do the tempting turquoise. Give our water down here some more bluish. Color and you can even add some little darker up to your sky if you want. Now I have kind of a white band going across there. It's going to disappear. We're going to need baked brown sugar. And for this, you will not need very much at all on your sponge. So I would probably, when you put it in, I would dab it off quite a bit and then kind of start off the edge of the page and run it across. And that's all you're going to want. You're not going to want much more than that. 
I'm going to kind of pull it down just a tad into the blue. And I'm not even going to keep this one open. I'm going to close it and get it out of the way because I know that's all the baked brown sugar that I'm going to need. The next, I'm using the old olive. Same thing. You do not want a lot of ink on the sponge. And I actually think I used that in a different color. And I'm kind of going in an up and down motion instead of a, a circle with it because I kind of want it to be kind of streaky up to give the effect of maybe some grass or something coming in. And then I'm also going to pull it down into the blue area. And if you want a little more, you can always add more. You just can't take it away once it's on there. <laughs> All right, I am done. I'm not touching the green again, the old olive, so it's done. It's out of the way. Okay, now we're pretty much done with the sky for the moment. We will come back to that in the end. But this bottom part, I am going to open Coastal Cabana. no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this. Okay, now the last one is the island in the island indigo. Now you want to be careful with this because it is such a dark color. And it, I would probably stamp off again as well. But it's water, so you kind of want it to be dark and murky. Unless you live on a nice specific island and then you may have some really pretty crystal clear water. I grew up on the Gulf of Mexico. It was not that pretty and clear. Okay, now I'm going to come back with some of my other colors. This is the um, Sky Soft. Let's do... Uh, I don't think I need the Tempting Turquoise. I think it's got enough blue and color in it. Let's do a little of the Pool Party. Okay, and we're just going to close these as I'm done with them. I definitely do not need Island Indigo. Now, the one that I do want to use again is this um, Coastal Cabana a little. Let me drag in some more. I kind of got heavy on some of that. Okay. Now, that is pretty much ready for our Lotus Blossom. Now, this is where it gets fun. For the Lotus Blossom, the flowers on top, obviously we're going to stamp them normal like you would any other stamp, or the Lotus Blossom, I guess I should say. All right, for me, I'm going to start, I do my colors in reverse for this particular thing. I'm going to start with the Daffodil Delight. And I didn't have this set up in time. Okay. 
and I put my little arrow, I know some people say to the top, I point it towards the corner. That just is me, and that's a little easier for me. Okay, we are going to stamp off with the Lotus Blossom. Make sure I'm getting good. Okay. Very lightly stamp it off because I want it to have some light and dark spots. Okay, we're going to turn this flower, we're going to put it down here. Okay, and while we're inked up with the yellow, we're going to come over and we're going to stamp another one. Almost up to the top. Get my head in the shot there. And you see that? I forgot to stamp that off, and you see the big difference there. But that's okay. We're going to go with it. Okay, now I'm going to keep going with this particular stamp. Now, how I do my reflections is I use the imaging sheet from the stamp -a -Majig. Now, there's two sides. You got a rough side and a smooth side. We're going to stamp onto the smooth side. Now, I stamped the Daffodil Delight off the page again. And now here you have to be careful because of it being the plastic, it will slide when you put it down. I'm just gonna stamp that directly on the sheet. I don't know if y'all can see that. There is the image. Okay, I am coming in. I'm going to do my first flower. And we're going to put this one down quite a bit. Now you're going to have to play and turn until you decide you have it just about where you want it. And then you're going to lay it down and just rub. Now it's not going to show hardly at all when I pick this up. and you can barely see it there. Okay, now the next one. Okay, we just got done stamping the first one. Now we're ready to do the second one. I've already stamped it on the plastic film. We're going to line it up where you want it. Okay. I'm done with the Daffodil Delight, so that can be closed and put out of the way. Next, we're moving on to the Tangelo Twist. Let me switch my stamps. Now we're doing the stamp that's labeled number two. Okay. Tangelo Twist. I'm just leaving. I'm not going to stamp this one off. Um, maybe. Stamp it off a little bit. Okay. Come in. Line it up. The easiest way to line it up is to Two points or three points at the top of the flower is to find those. Hopefully my head is not in the shot. You may have to get this off. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take my glasses off and get in close. It was a tad bit off, but that's not bad. Okay, now this one, we're going to go ahead and do it. Okay, it's looking pretty. Same thing for your bottom. You're going to 
stamp the ink. If it slides and moves too much, then you will want to start over. That did pretty well for me. Now we just, same thing, we're going to line this up with our flower. And the water flowers are pretty easy and forgiving, more so than the ones that are not water reflection. And there we go. Swipe that off. Repeat the process. Now we're moving on to the elegant eggplant. We're done with the Tangelo twist. And now I'm using the stamp that's labeled number one. Okay, now I'm using the Elegant Eggplant, and I think we will stamp it off real lightly, and then come in. We're going to do the same process on lining up. Repeat the process onto the image sheet. Okay, now we are almost done. I changed my mind on the color. We're going to do the stem in guarded green. Now, since we only need a very small portion of the stamp to be covered, you just use a little post-it note to cover up what you don't want. We're going to ink that up. Remove your post-it note because it has ink on it and you will get it on your card. Okay. Decide the position you want your stem. Stamp that down. Now, to do the reflection, obviously you're going to do the same thing. You will put the little... Um, 
post-it note back on. Let me double check how much of that I'm going to need. Ink her up, remove the page, stamp onto the clear plastic film, turn it around, line it up, and there you go. Now came the fun part. I kept looking at the first one I did and I kept going. Something just doesn't quite seem right. It doesn't really look like it's in the water or reflected. So I thought, let's try to go over the image with Whisper White because I know Whisper White, when it dries, it is very translucent and you can see through it. So that is what I've done here. I went over the water and the sky around the flower which gave it a watercolor effect. And that is the last step on doing this card. Now try to avoid the actual uh, flower up at the top that is not reflected. Let's see. 
Now the card will be wet for a little bit. But that's how it was done.